All right, Carl, for some mysterious digital reason, um, there was no sound on the first take of this recording. No problem, I got you covered. Um, hey, the more you can make yourself get into starting position on both hands, which for this week, right hand wise, is going to mean pretending that you're never going to play strings five and six, you're not playing bass, you're just four, three, two. And only plant your pinky if it really feels intuitive. Um, you want to be able to do percussive things at some point, intermingled with single notes. That's why putting your pinky there is not optimal. But for single notes, it's totally fine if it feels intuitive. And left hand wise, just realizing that the entire thing shoulder and elbow, and you want to be in this juxtaposition the entire time, not thumb dragged off to the side. So the more you can just make yourself go boom, boink, It'll be a real big time saver, even if it seems like it's a pain initially. Um, so we're either way, we're in open E or open D tuning, just the effects which fret we're at. But here we are. Sorry if these are loud. Sorry if that's kind of loud. So we've got our... And what we got to watch for there is dampening in between each instance of... So we don't hear the slide backing up. So definitely start slowly and go for one and then two total of them pausing. Pause, reassess. Pause until that gets easy. Then try to do all eight of them, which is. And even there, we heard me mess up and do it. Yeah, but so. And then we get that riff that appears note for note, hand movement wise later in the song. The, and there's the first time your thumb and index juxtaposition is really gonna matter because we're going middle index thumb. Just be sure you're never striking the G string, the third string with your middle finger, which would happen because of pivoting back into this position where then your index and thumb are battling subconsciously for real estate. So there we are plopping our thumb like our hand on the two bass strings but you know that won't really matter until you plug in cool so there's a spooty booty meal boy boom and we get this yeah we get this so that's place place then these Then, and we really want to hear it resolve, but it's just like that, which creates tension, leaving us on that note. So, section, there you go. Taking a question, okay? So. Yeah, totally, that was it. And now we get our up to the seventh fret part. I'd get really smoking good at everything up till here as big section one. Again, sorry if this is kind of loud, but it's really done a bit actually. Cool. I'm going to put two stray notes on the page there by accident, but now we're up to the 17th fret against the five chord going. And like we talked about, since the right hand part, you know, this is a primarily a right hand riff. Our left hand part is just chill. Great time to work on vibrato. Um, just that trembling, you know. I think my mistake on the page was I wrote when it's just boom ba ding, boom ba ding. Section and yeah, you're probably on your electric or having a tough time with it, or have tuned your acoustic up to E and are at the 15th fret. Either way, there we are. And then we get the same riff, that same as advertised. That's the same strings, same frets, or no, excuse me, same strings, same action as that you did early. So we did the then. So there, and that was the faintly circled one that popped up twice. And we got one more lick before he goes up to the 93rd fret or whatever.
Yeah, so this is that. So what's cool about this is we go like, and we go ascending, and then, um, or rather, let me just give that a listen real quick. Oh no, yeah, that's right. It's um, followed by. So yeah. Well, let me just double check. Make sure I'm getting that right. Yeah, all right. So we just want like. We should. What it says on the page, and then you can break off right there. Um, and you know, getting great up to there would be time well spent. Um, and then maybe just try to pick out a couple of the other licks from um, the, in, the in between the lines and the verses and so forth. Chances are that they'll be very similar shape wise to what we did in this song, uh, whichever tuning you're in, because there's just one one shape of slide, right? But I mean, similar phrasings and and so forth and. You know, one of the big projects is ear training, so where you can just listen out anything, uh, and accordingly, if you try a couple of the other phrasings, we should be good. Um, so you did not pay me, and we can figure out how we want to handle that. Um, so uh, yeah, like uh, the PayPal is fine, or if you want to send me a check or something, um, just you know respond to my email or my text. We'll figure that out. And my bad, we got to talking about music, uh, but either way, we will get that done. Commerce, and I uh, hope to see you soon, man. I think um, if you find two hours to practice in between sessions, that we could be doing a more aggressive pace of lessons every two weeks, three weeks, or something like that. But if finances are the issue, rather than practice time, whatever works for you. But um, I think if you uh, pay more attention to order of operations during practice, and tweak your fun to efficient ratio towards efficiency that you might find yourself progressing uh, much quicker than you're used to. It's just really annoying adult, adult learning curve. Our brain wants to just do it the same way we always have, and we have to override that. Um, just close these windows sometimes. It's nice to crash on. And there you go, bro. See you soon. Ding, ding. <laughs>